What's on the menu tonight, boss? The same thing we eat every night. <laughs> tendies. <laughs> Chicken! Give me tendies! Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up, if you please. <laughs> Today we're diving into r slash Tales of Neckbeards. Actually, it comes from my personal subreddit, r slash Red X Reads. Yes, it is the beard apocalypse. I let it drop for a couple of months. The views kind of suffered on the last one, but this next one is by Mr. Ramtide himself, and we've been missing him on the channel lately. He disappeared to parts unknown. Okay, actually, he's still hanging out in the Discord server, but he's just been busy with life, and I kind of feel the need for a Ramtide story, so we're going to dive back in, see if the beard apocalypse might perform a little bit better for Christmas time. Now that December's rolling around, it would be like a really awesome birthday present to me if this video would like rocket to the moon or something like that. <laughs> I don't know, man. Hope for the best, brace for the worst. You know what they say. So I hope that you guys are looking forward to another entry of the beard apocalypse. The link to the previous video is in the description as per usual, as well as a little card that should be popping up on your screen. But I don't think the stories are tied, like, too closely together, at least not this early on, so you should be able to catch on. With all that said, let's get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some of this Tales of Neckbeard's cringe. Frank and Chad <laughs> by Ramtide. A beard apocalypse story. This is story number three, parts one and two, in that video that I mentioned previously. So, let's jump into this. The rumbling storm was beginning to coalesce around the small mountain hamlet. The rolling thunder heralded flashes of lightning, carried by angry winds that tore at the shuttered houses. While many in the village tonight were content to stay close to their hearths, frying chickens and sipping carbonated beverages... <laughs> among the comforting presence of their families and their waifus. It was not the case at all. The electrifying radiance of the approaching deluge had only vivified the doctor. By the light of the moon that was now eclipsed by the rolling clouds, he drove his spade once more into the soil beneath. A dull thud beneath the ground conducted a chill down his spine, as he stooped inside the massive hole in which he had dug. He had struck gold. Or, more precisely, you know, it was wood. <laughs> Hollow wood. He brushed aside the soil with his hands to reveal the lid of the casket. Oh my god, what dubious deeds hath been wrought! <laughs> Igor, quickly! The doctor called to his companion. Igor crested the top of the ditch. A man of diminutive and hunchbacked stature, the good doctor's heart went out to the poor wretch, who had been so cruelly denied an alpha visage, chiseled from stone by Fortuna's own vicious whims. His eyes rolled loosely in his balding head, wispy patches of hair dabbled his cheeks, and grew out in tufts along his stubby neck. <laughs> oh, poor Igor. His hunched back barely concealed his protruding belly, upon which he wore a tunic emblazoned with the spiciest of memes. I'm gonna bet that it was probably a Pepe. <laughs> Pepe did nothing wrong! Yes, Doctor! Igor replied in his characteristically wheezing nasal voice. He brought a cart close to the open grave wherein the Doctor stood. The Doctor seized the lever that he had brought into the pit with him and pried open the lid of the casket. The initial stench of smegma and poop <laughs> was overpowering at first as he stared at the recently deceased in the silk-lined coffin, choking back vomit as he did. <laughs> Though the occupant had only been dead for several hours, the criminal, hung by the neck for the high crime of beardery, <laughs> was exhibiting signs of rigor mortis. His chubby little erection stood up like a gopher in his curiously stained sweatpants. 
<laughs> God, I want to read it so seriously, but it just keeps cracking me up. God damn. The rolls of the corpse slapped against each other as the doctor hoisted him up onto his shoulders, gasping for breath beneath his girth, and Igor seized him by the arms to help drag him from the ditch. With their grisly cargo now loaded, the doctor exited the hole, and Igor hitched the cart to the waiting mules. A tarp was unceremoniously draped upon that dead, malodorous pervert. <laughs> And the duo climbed into the bench seat of the carriage, snapping the reins. The trek back to Castle Frankenchad was arduous. The storm had descended upon the hamlet in all of its ferocity, pelting the small carriage with its torrential downpour. Wind ripped at their clothes and threatened to toss the tiny cart from the precarious mountain trail that the mules struggled to ascend. I mean, it's not a real castle if it's not on a mountain, right? <laughs> The castle walls eventually enclosed the vehicle in their cold embrace, offering some precious refuge from the raging storm. Exhausted from their voyage, Igor and the doctor dismounted from the wagon, only resuming labors once more to bring that cadaver down and into the doctor's laboratory. Oh, Jesus. Don't do what I think you're gonna do. You gonna bring a beard back to life? <laughs> What's the point of this? Oh, no. The body was placed upon an examination table, and the doctor motioned for Igor to leave him alone with his thoughts as he paced about his workshop. Poor Igor, the doctor mused, cursed by such a wretched fate. It was by mere luck alone that the townsfolk hadn't assaulted the walls of Castle Frankenchad, demanding that Igor be dragged by horses to the town square and thrown into the stocks. Was he beardy? I mean, yes, certainly he was, but is it not the beard on the inside that counts? <laughs> oh, God. The doctor was compelled by infinite mercy, then, to show that not all beards are irredeemable. No, he had to prove that Igor had yet a place among mankind, just as anyone did. Tonight... He would bring his endless hours of research to its climax. He would transcend the laws of nature themselves. He would forge a being of both Beard and Chad, of Alpha and Beta, and he would show the world that these two drastically different polarities of man could not only exist in peace within themselves, but within the greater body of society as a whole. I mean, it's an admirable task, I do suppose, but <laughs> do we really need to take it this far? Please, Doctor, reconsider! <laughs> Tonight, his magnum opus would come to its realization. He would push the boundaries of not only life, but social stratification itself. <laughs> Are you not cowering yet? <laughs> His eyes perused his tools before setting upon a scalpel, and he delved into his grisly work, gathering the final needed pieces to complete his masterpiece. Satisfied, he stepped back to soak in his creation. It was a patchwork of man, a sight to behold. The stony face of a male model, with the eyes of a peeping Tom, hid the brain of a Magic the Gathering champion. <laughs> All sitting atop a craning, unshaven neck of a beta orbiter. <laughs> but why male models? <laughs> the trunk of a linebacker branched into the arms of a quarterback and of a public masturbator. <laughs> a smegma choked micro dick. <laughs> oh, God! Dangled between the athletic legs of a track and field champion. Madness possessed the doctor as he finished the last line of stitches to the sexual deviant's arm, and he stood back to survey his work one final time. With great pride, he approached the massive pulley system by which he would hoist his creation up to the heavens and imbue it with the electrifying energy of life itself. Oh man, this is gonna go horrible! He's gonna go all Letty of Mice and Men. He's gonna choke a lady in the barn. 
Don't let no bad happen. With each pull of the chain, the laboratory table climbed higher and higher towards the vaulted ceiling of Castle Frankenchad. The ceiling yawned wide, revealing the storming heavens above and the crackle of lightning only spurred the doctor's possessed efforts to hoist him up to the roof. When at last the pulleys locked into place and the table came to a stop at its zenith, a curious silence overtook the laboratory. The winds moaned and howled about his creation, pondering, perhaps, whether to guide a fateful strike of raw electric current into the cadaver. Fortuna rolled to hit and deviously grinned back from the ether as it came up a nat 20. <laughs> Why the gods, no! The mighty voltage of nature coursed through the lifeless Alpha Beta, sending a shudder through the body, and the doctor's heart quickened as he once more seized the chains and lowered the table back into the laboratory. Now pregnant with apprehension, he grabbed a stethoscope and placed it atop the beard chad's mighty chest, wherein the heart of a white knight had found its home. <laughs> With bated breath, he listened intently. A dull thud, deep within the cavernous torso, brought a smile to his lips. A quiet chuckle escaped him as he put the stethoscope down on his workbench. His chuckle slowly crescendoed into hysterical laughter. He threw his head back in maniacal glee and shouted up to the heavens above, <laughs> It's a beard! It's a beard! Chad beard! Chad beard thing! <laughs> now exhausted from his labors, he placed a blanket atop the now rising and falling chest of the Alpha Beta and headed up to the dining room. Igor would surely have prepared something for him to eat by now. He wandered through the hallways of Castle Frankenchad until he found himself by the dining table. Igor was busily attending to setting the silverware in place, and the doctor smiled fondly at his deformed, socially awkward friend as he pulled out a chair and took his place. What's on the menu tonight, boss? The same thing we eat every night. <laughs> Tendies. <laughs> Chicken! Give me tindies! Doctor, how did it go? It went well, my friend. His heart beats and he breathes. As of now, I'm letting him rest. Come, let us have dinner together, and we can return to the laboratory to examine him. Igor went to the kitchen and returned a platter upon which numerous strips of chicken breaded and fried, sent up plumes of steam. Yes, truly a meal fit for a beard king. <laughs> Igor walked to where his master sat and piled a healthy portion atop the doctor's plate before loading his own. He doled out a healthy dollop of his mother-famous honey mussy on the side, <laughs> and then he filled up the doctor's pewter cup with a drought of green effervescence, bubbling as it poured. I think I recognize that green drink. Essence of diabetes, they call it. <laughs> he then took his place at the table beside his master, barely able to contain his excitement as they ate. As their meal neared completion, however, the polite conversation that they had about the resting Alpha Beta was interrupted by a loud crash from somewhere within the bowels of Castle Frankenchad. Both cast worried glances at each other, stood up from where they sat, and proceeded through the halls toward the laboratory from whence the sound had emanated. The doctor seized the handle and flung the door wide open, peering into his workshop. The blanket that had once draped the Alpha Beta now lay on the floor, and the construct's prodigious form now staggered on its very own two legs, desperately clutching the table where the doctor had meticulously laid out his tools earlier. The Doctor and Igor both rushed to the side of the Alpha Beta, supporting him with both hands. With the grasp of a footballer, the Alpha Beta held on to Igor for balance, and with the grasp of a horn dog, it seized its dick and began to stroke its diminutive erection. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but what we would expect at this point, I am sure. 
<laughs> the Doctor recoiled in horror at the actions of its creation, only for that initial moment, before pulling loose the hand that was death-gripped around the Alpha Beta's wiener and throwing it over his shoulder. <laughs> The arm began to move away and back towards the stubby little boner, <laughs> but the doctor once more seized the arm and held it firmly in place. This is not the time nor the place, Alpha Beta. The doctor beckoned for Igor to follow his lead, and with a deliberate precision, they helped the staggering, masturbatory monster <laughs> over towards the closet wherein some garments were arrayed. Perhaps, the doctor thought, if the Alpha Beta were dressed, its inhibitions might increase and it would stop fondling itself. With one hand firmly pinning the wanking arm, <laughs> the doctor opened the wardrobe with the other and then beckoned as if to demonstrate the contents therein to this newly risen Alpha Beta. A groan escaped it and its eyes went wide as it surveyed the fresh, clean linen held within. With some help from the good doctor and his assistant, the Alpha Beta soon found himself donning the garments of men, though they were mismatched and in poor taste. <laughs> a fedora with a feather donned the top of his head, accented by a pair of aviator sunglasses and an Abercrombie and Fitch polo shirt in light blue. On its sticky hand, a single fingerless glove found its home. A trench coat hid the bulk of his form. Designer bootcut jeans terminated at a pair of Birkenstocks <laughs> upon his feet, and upon his hip hung a war sword from some distant country in the Orient. Now you're looking almost human. Almost. <laughs> There's a good lad. Uh, come, let's get you something to eat then, remarked the doctor. You must be starving after, you know, being dead. We got hot tendies upstairs, and Igor's famous family honey musty to dip him in, and a fresh drought of home-brewed dew to wash it all down. Come along, my boy, and we'll help you to the table. <laughs> gobble gobble, gobble gobble, one of us, one of us. <laughs> Igor and the doctor guided the Alpha Beta through the winding hallways of Castle Frank and Chad, finally arriving once more in the dining room with their guest now in tow. The doctor pulled out a chair for the Alpha Beta, and Igor and the doctor both assisted him into his seat. With his creation now seated, the doctor took a seat adjacent to the Alpha Beta and studied him intently. Slowly, the masturbatory hands crept near the construct's crotch once more, and the doctor slapped it away declaring, No jacking off at the dinner table. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Igor soon returned with a loaded plate and set it before the Alpha Beta, who greedily dug straight into it, sauce smearing his chiseled jaw and breading sticking into his pearly white, perfectly straight teeth and his mangy neck scruff. What do you think? Is it good? The Alpha Beta grunted its approval before opening its mouth, its words struggling to form through a larynx with which it was not yet familiar. Tendies. Yes, boy, they're tendies. Aren't they wonderful? <laughs> He's learning so quickly. Good God, he remembers, truly. The Alpha Beta nodded in approval bringing yet another tender to its mouth and swallowing it whole before washing the meal down with an entire glass of dew. Outside, the storm still raged about the castle, and the hour was drawing late. Somewhere in the bowels of the manor, a clock's chimes echoed down the halls, sounding out the hour. The doctor turned to his assistant then and remarked, Igor, uh, I'm going to retire for the evening. Uh, prepare the carriage for tomorrow and see him back to my lab. There's a cot for him to sleep on. In the morning, we shall go to town and demonstrate this miracle of science to the townsfolk. At long last, Igor, you no longer have to live in shame. We'll prove to them once and for all that Chad and Beard, Alpha and Beta, can exist side by side. 
You no longer have to fear for your well-being. Igor smiled meekly as the doctor returned to his quarters. As he was told, he helped the Alpha Beta back to the laboratory where a cot had been prepared and shut the door behind him, locking it on his way out. Igor then retired for the evening as well. Day broke the following morning, as it tends to do, and the doctor climbed forth from his bed, got dressed, and headed to the dining room for his usual morning fare. Igor had left a fresh, steaming pile of bacon and egg hot pockets atop a plate for him to enjoy. <laughs> As he sipped his morning coffee, still high with contentment from last night's success. I'm surprised he's drinking coffee and not do. I guess he can't drink do before noon. That's like an unwritten rule or something. <laughs> from down the hall, the doctor could hear Igor approach with the Alpha Beta behind him, who, after a good meal and a night's rest, managed to lumber along at his own shambling pace without any assistance from the diminutive beard beside him. He settled into a chair of his own doing and took a seat across from the doctor, tipping his fedora. Good morning. Oh, he's learning so quick. <laughs> Is this all muscle memory? Igor returned once more from the kitchen with another heaping plate of Hot Pockets for the Alpha Beta and then another plate for himself. The doctor was positively glowing, now excited to bring his creation into town to demonstrate the miracles of science to the residents of the hamlet. Yes, science is a great thing, but not like this. Not like this. <laughs> with their breakfast concluded, the doctor took the Alpha Beta with him and left Igor alone at Castle Frankenchad to attend to his daily chores, including, but not limited to, emptying all the piss bottles, <laughs> washing the stains out of the underwear, and patching the holes that he punched in the plaster after one particularly belligerent night wherein he had imbibed far too much dew. Well, who hasn't been there before? I gotta say that much. <laughs> the rain had now stopped, and while that cool autumn day was overcast and gloomy, in the mountains, yet another storm seemed to be gathering. This, however, would not stop the doctor's grand machinations. The mule-drawn cart came to a halt in the town square, and beneath the hood of the cloak that covered the Alpha Beta's presence, a quiet murmur escaped, composed of slight concern and confusion that could not be articulated entirely into words. <laughs> the doctor placed a hand upon the Alpha Beta's shoulder and remarked, It's okay. They'll love you. I promise. With a flourish, the doctor stood up from the bench seat and hopped down from the cart and onto the cobblestone street below. Behind him, the Alpha Beta lumbered slowly, easing itself onto the pavement. Friends! Townsfolk! Villagers! It is I, Dr. Victor Von Frankenchad. I come to you today to present a miracle of profound... Scientific intrigue! Several townsfolk paused for a moment in their tracks and began to gather around the cart. Others poked their head out from the windows to see what all the commotion outside was about. What do you want, nerd? <laughs> One of the villagers sneered. Another chimed up. Yeah, be quick with it, dweeb! I have agonized, my friends, over the deepest questions of life itself. Are Chad and Beard truly unable to coexist together in harmony? Is there no way that we can reconcile this seemingly deep divide between us? Or are our misgivings perhaps misplaced? Is it the fact that these people merely appear beardish on the outside the problem? Or is the real problem a metaphysical beard which perforates the soul? Can these two alien elements, the Alpha and the Beta, ever possibly reconcile? I tell you, friends, I have plumbed the depths of these mysteries, and I have come to you today to prove to you that indeed we can transcend these petty divisions and occupy a society wherein Chad and Beard can live harmoniously side by side. 
Whatever, loser! Go read your stupid books, nerd! <laughs> I, Dr. Victor Ron Frankenchad, present to you the pinnacle of man's reasoning, the true reconciliation of our duality, the Alpha Beta! The doctor seized the cloak that wrapped his creation and tore it away, exposing his construct to the prying eyes of the jeering villagers. A pause struck the crowd, replaced by quiet murmurs as they examined it. A crude, haphazard mockery of flesh, stitched together by the hands of a madman, stood before them in completely mismatched dress. <laughs> yeah, the mismatched dress, that's the important part. Make sure you note that. <laughs> it's not the fact that he's a bunch of body parts sewed together. <laughs> he's also dressed stupid. A nervous, stupid grin had broken out on the creature's face as the onlookers gawked. It's horrible! Oh my god! It's a monster! What have you done, Victor? Friends, do not be alarmed. He is just like you or I. This amalgamation of man is a combination of both Beard and Chad, which has been animated to life. Here he exists before you, in all his serenity and bliss, no longer bothered by the petty divisions that we are so quick to perceive and exacerbate. Look, he likes football! <laughs> <laughs> the doctor grabbed a football from the back of the wagon and gave it to the Alpha Beta, who began to toss it up and down in his hands, before pointing to one of the townsfolk to go long. <laughs> he threw it with precision, and a villager caught that precise pass with ease. It's a cheap parlor trick! That thing isn't human! It's an abomination! And it needs to be destroyed! No, he's not an abomination. Look at him. He... The deviant hand had slowly creeped down to the Alpha Beta's crotch and began to vigorously rub the exterior of his pants. <laughs> oh, no. It's all been ruined with the pervert arm. <laughs> the townsfolk looked on in horror as pure bliss washed over the Alpha Beta's face and a wet spot began to stain the fabric of his jeans. <laughs> Victor, too, stared in horror, trying to shout, Quit masturbating in public! <laughs> but it was too late. The deed was done, and the unholy seed was spilled. Oh, no. Now's the part where they chase him into the woods with pitchforks and torches, right? I hate this part. <laughs> that thing just jacked off in public! <laughs> no, you don't understand! The doctor cried. He only did that because he's nervous. You've never gotten a boner when you were afraid. <laughs> I can't say that I have. Fear boner is alien to me. He's just like us. He's human. You created a bee at most foul, Victor. Whoa. We ought to have your head for resurrecting these monsters, another villager decried. And perhaps we will. But first, we'll destroy that devil that you wrought with your own hands. Either get out of our way or you will face the consequences. Oh my god. Angry shouting started to rise from the crowd as they began to circle in around the wagon to seize the Alpha Beta. Victor shrank at the impending onslaught and fell to his knees in tears, weeping as the villagers pushed past. The angry shouts quickly turned to shrieks of terror, and Victor turned his head to see that the Alpha Beta had taken flight, working to bust free from the encircling townsfolk about him. With his strong quarterback arm, he deftly flung men to the side and barreled through atop his powerful legs. With his pervert hand, he copped a quick feel of the nearest ass on his way out. <laughs> oh God, Peter, hit me! Yeah! Why'd you have to give him a pervert hand? I guess he's got to be part beard. Like the championship runner from which he was pieced together, he then disappeared down the road and beyond the woods, leaving Victor alone in the square with a mass of angry townsfolk. Let this be a lesson to you, nerd! Don't go messing around with things you don't understand! One of the townsfolk shouted at him. 
The last thing we need here is more beards. You count yourself lucky the children didn't see that. Go back to your cuck shed on the hill. <laughs> and don't come back until you learn some sense. <laughs> it's like idiocracy. A wad of saliva landed in the doctor's face as he sat in the square, tormented by the events that had just transpired. The crowd began to thin out, and eventually, the doctor rose to his feet, assumed his position atop the cart, and rode back to Castle Frankenchad to pass the days. But what of the Alpha Beta? You're just gonna leave it? He's like a, a Sasquatch man now? <laughs> the seasons move quickly since the Alpha Beta's departure, from autumn to winter, and winter to spring. The thoughts of his wayward creation, now alone and loose in the world, begin to fade from the doctor's mind, thinking that perhaps the Alpha Beta had gone on to better things, etching out a living for itself in some quiet corner where it could finally live in peace and happiness, content to throw its footballs and build magic decks. <laughs> as all Alpha Betas are wont to do, I presume, except they don't exist because they're unholy abominations of nature! <laughs> In the spring of the following year, and much to his surprise, the doctor found himself a waifu to whom he would be wed. He had always been belittled and beaten down, perceived as an unattractive bookworm nerd who basically couldn't dance or play sports very well, but yet, his waifu, the lovely Milady Fair, had found her passions inflamed by the studious and well-to-do doctor in the castle on the hill, and in that spring, he proposed to her in marriage. The eve of the wedding drew closer as the days went by, and the doctor found himself increasingly elated with the passage of time. One particular summer evening in his study, however, he felt a pervasive sense of unease, that could only be settled by something so simple and serene as a walk in nature. He donned his hat and walking stick, bid Igor good day, and proceeded out of the gates of Castle Frankenchad and down the winding slope of the road. At the first fork, he opted to head towards the woods instead of the town. Some time in nature was bound to cure the malaise that had embedded itself deep within his soul. He wandered far along that winding forest road, finally choosing to rest beneath a large oak at the edge of a mountain lake. The birds sang in the trees, and the wind rippled across the delicate, glassy surface of the water. The smell of flowers was thick in the air, and he removed his hat and boots, enjoying the calm of the day. It was serene, peaceful, quiet. So quiet that the birds had stopped singing. Not a single creature rustled in the bushes. The doctor became acutely aware of just how alone he was, and he could not shake the feeling that somewhere, somehow, eyes had fallen upon him that felt nothing but scorn. A voice spoke from behind him that sent a shudder down his spine, bringing him back to that electrifying surge wherein his creation had first been given life. It's been a long time, Dr. Victor Van Frankenstein. Alpha Beta, the doctor remarked quietly. The lumbering form of the construct came into view, took a seat beside him underneath the shade of the towering oak, removing the dirty fedora from atop his greasy locks of hair. Yeah. Alpha Beta was the name you gave me, a cruel and dispassionate representation, not of who I am, but what you believe me to be. My name is Chris. <laughs> Chris is a rather good beard name, admittedly. I have taken this name for myself. It pleases me. It seems to have some connotation, some memory which I cannot recall, and yet it feels natural, so Chris is who I am. The doctor agreed. Very well, Chris. Not very well, me, Victor. 
We have business to discuss. The doctor scoffed. <laughs> and what business is that? Our business has long since concluded. Oh, far from it. Uh, are you a religious man, doctor? I've kept watch over you since we last parted that day in the square. I see you read your Bible much these days in your study. Well, I too came into possession of that good book. You see, after I left, I was taken in by a mountain hermit. He was blind. He couldn't discern my true nature. And so he gave me refuge because he took pity on me. He educated me, fed me, looked out for me for many days and nights. I'm sure that if he had known just what I was, however, he would have rejected me. Evidenced enough by the fact that when he first laid hands upon my patchwork form, he screamed in abject terror and told me never to return to his house. They called me a monster, Victor. But I'm not a monster. I'm a professional quarterback, magic player, public masturbating, white knight track superstar stitched together and brought back to consciousness. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm complex. <laughs> I have motivations, and desires, wants, and needs. I possess cognition, and spirit, and soul. I'm a human being at my heart, although admittedly an atrocity in the eyes of many. Even beards, and those rejected by society, those whom you believe that I could be a liaison for their redemption, recoil in horror at the sight of me. I am alone in this world, Doctor. Do you know what it is to be alone in this world? The song of the birds had not returned, as the question hung heavy over that small mountain lake. Victor slowly shook his head in the negative. That's right, Doctor. You do not. You are not like me. You were blessed with something that I've been denied. You are a creation of God, not a creation of man. The spirit that animates this world had the foresight and infinite wisdom to give the gift of compassion to his creation. For you, it's something so natural that you so easily enjoy. For me, it's something that I can never realize. I will forever be shunned. Not even the box wine drinking cat ladies of Lake Beardia have looked upon me without feeling abject revulsion. Oh my god, there's a Lake Beard continent? Bro, this cinematic universe is getting way too deep for me. <laughs> and so the doctor says, What are you asking me, Chris? You created me just like how God created man. But instead of caring for me, you turned me over to a rabbit horde of townsfolk and let them drive me away. I, however, am prepared to forgive you. I don't wish to inhabit this world alone, Victor. I need companionship, too. A companion who can understand me, who is like me, and who will not be repulsed by me. I'm here today to ask that you create a waifu for me. <laughs> oh no, not like this. You already made the mistake once. Can't you just tell him to look out at the lake and tell him about the rabbits and put one in the back of his head? <laughs> there you go, problem solved. But I know it's like a, a father killing his child. It's, it's probably a lot harder in practice than in theory. Victor's conscience, of course, was in turmoil. This was his creation, the result of his sweat and tears and genius standing before him, beseeching him for companionship in a world which, most assuredly, he was one of a kind, unique, hated for that, and completely alone. As his creator, was it not then his obligation to provide a suitable mate to Alpha 
Chris so that he might not have to suffer in all his isolation. But Chris is absolutely repugnant to every living man and woman. What right did the doctor have to impose that cruel reality once more upon a being who would forever be scorned and shunned as well? What if his creation didn't take to Chris, but scorned him instead? Would that not even further amplify his anger and sorrow? Questions flooded the doctor's mind, with no readily available answers to reconcile them. At length, Victor spoke. Can't you just get a body pillow? <laughs> <laughs> it does seem like the easy solution, doesn't it? You insult me, Victor. I've watched you for many a night now. You're set to be married in a few short days, reveling in the natural companionship, which is your birthright. And you would deny me the same? You won't even make an effort to try. Do you know... What kind of hell you've bestowed upon me, Victor? I can't construct a magic deck for fun without thinking of how to win in three turns. My jock side wants to kick my own ass. <laughs> and this hand, it won't stop touching me. <laughs> you have cursed me with hell on earth. And you leave me to rot in it alone? I can't in good conscience inflict it upon another either, Chris. Don't you understand that? Then strike me down where we stand and put me out of my misery. All right, said and done. You ain't got to tell me twice. <laughs> Victor took a deep breath. For a moment, he gripped the stone beside him contemplating the finality of caving in the skull through which the eyes of a pervert greedily undressed him. It would be a mercy, but it was one that the doctor did not have the strength to provide. He was not a killer. Even less so could he bring himself to destroy a life that he himself had wrought. I can't murder you, Chris. Chris rose to his feet, his shadow towering over the doctor blacker than even the shade cast by the oak, and through squinting, cold eyes, he stared Victor down. I'll be watching you closely. Mark my words, Victor. As you've turned your back on your creation, so your creation will turn its back on you. This is not over. If I am to be alone, then you shall be as well. I shall see you again, Victor. I shall see you on your wedding night. Aw, oh, snap. He gonna kill Victor's wife. Chris placed the fedora back atop his head and gave a threatening tip of it to the doctor. He then lumbered off, leaving the doctor alone beneath the shade of that oak, treading through the moral quagmire into which his psyche now sank. Church bells rang loud as the small cart carried Dr. Von Frankenchad and the Milady Fair back towards the castle atop the hill. They pulled into the courtyard and dismounted, and Victor held the doors open for his blushing bride as they entered the stately manor. Through the winding corridors they walked, they retired almost immediately towards his bedchambers in a fitful fancy of love and burning desire to consummate their union. Milady Fair excused herself briefly to freshen up after the ceremony, while Victor began to unlace his shoes, when a scream from the bathroom caught his attention. Oh, by the gods! <laughs> he dashed to the bathroom and flung open the door. The broken body of Milady Fair was clutched by her neck like a broken rag doll in the hands of a mighty quarterback. The life had been squeezed from her body, and the light had now completely fled from her eyes. Victor watched in shock as Chris threw back his head and let out a final condemning REE! <laughs> before crashing out the window and into the night. Fury blinded Victor as he barreled through the halls, the words of the fiend echoing in his head. I shall see you on your wedding night. night. In agony and rage, he cried out for Igor, 
demanding that he be brought his pistol and saber at once. Igor, however, never responded, and in one of the lonely corridors of the castle Frankenchad, his mangled body too was soon discovered, his neck snapped in half like a twig. Victor stormed into the armory, grabbing his weapons and cloak. He swore an oath to himself then and there as he checked his powder and shot. His creation would die by his very hand, even if he had to hunt it to the ends of the earth. And no one has seen him since. Victor, bro, I'm telling you, you could have nipped all of this in the bud just by shooting that dude in the head. It's easier than it looks, especially when he's a mangled corpse mess. He could have had his happy ending, but he failed because he was not strong enough. He was strong enough to create life, but not strong enough to end it. And really, if you're going to create it, then you got to be strong enough to do both. You know what I'm saying? God does it all the time, all right? For every, like, 100 babies he puts out here, he's killing, like, uh, another, what, 50 old people? <laughs> uh, the, the ratio's a little off. That's why overpopulation, but... That's not something we have to worry about with uh, Victor Von Frank and Chad anymore. You think he's going to find another Milady Fair? Because I don't. Did he end up finding his creation and killing it? Doesn't seem like it or he would have come back to the castle. I think maybe the creation got the better of him. But I do hope that Alpha Beta Chris was able to find a life somewhere out there in the world. Even as just like a muckraker or something like that. <laughs> you could be a YouTuber that doesn't show his face. That, that would be good, too. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Oh, God damn. I do hope you guys enjoyed this uh, beard fic. If you did, I hope you like, comment, and or subscribe. I know it's a bit of a different vibe than the stuff we normally do on the channel, but it's nice to mix it up every now and then, isn't it? Maybe share the video around if you're feeling froggy. Maybe you want to weird somebody out with a Frankenstein reference that they don't quite get. <laughs> That's pretty funny. We also got links in the description, plugs, playlists, podcasts, and my social medias. Yes! Twitter, Discord, Facebook. Oh, and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons over on Patreon. I'd like to thank them Jerry, Jerry much as I do. So thank you! Robert Waits, Baron Von Wagpants, Jarhead Jerry, Ura, Logan Wolf, Arr, Arr, TSM Kirby, Blue, <laughs> Crafty Clown Jerry, Hong Kong, Aaron W, Twisted Child, Cinema Susie, Danny Jerry, Nerdnik, Floral Lang Sign, Fire Drink, Giggle Jerry, Irary, the, <laughs> the most different Jerry spelling, Livers and Loves Jerry, so does Red X, Mr. Random and Manga Fan, Rogue, Sign Revolver, Maglamar Storm Rose, Jerry, the OG, that's right, the original, <laughs> Becca, Jerry Skitsune, Little Lone Wolf, Vanilla Mel, Satori, 211 Jerry, The Return of Jerry, a jury of juggling Jerry's, <laughs> Althea Blue, and Anaki, Assassin Pug Jerry, Bang Bang, Atheist Jerry, Too Euphoric, Grizzly, Bailey Joy, Bearded Jerry, Watch out for that guy, <coughs> Bitch Gravelin, Blade the Hero, Blameless Fish, Blip Bloop Jerry, Camille Sarah, Commander J Tank, Delta Rune Jerry, Dennis Dayton, Dinosaur Nightlight, Disposable Waifu, Aaron Lennox, Frozen Over Studios, Gypsy, Hey Dream BR, Heathcliff, Itchy Nuts, Just Scratching Bro, A Pimp Named J Crisp, <laughs> JM Coon, Jennifer Schaefer, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry the Smoke, Jerry the Other Jerry's, Jerry the Outlaw Mother Trucker, Wong Wong, <laughs> John Hero, Jolly Black Jerry, Sibufa, because if your boofa is free, K Jerry W, Kajow, Crowhee, Lady Jerry, Nick's Tom, Legend Jerry, Miss Monday, Lord Lionel, Jack is Rule, Melgar the Destroyer, Mint Jerry Chip, the freshest of the Jerry's. My boy, that one, Nick. Natari, Nightmare Jerry. Oh no. Or Gaming Jerry Steve, congrats on the marriage. Panda Prince Jerry, Bamboo. <laughs> Phantom of the Pines, Jerry Kinson, Jerry Beth, Rose Jerry Miller, <laughs> TSM Kirby, Sarita the Lolita, Sarita Dash, SSJ3, Red Ramtide X, that's Mr. J. <laughs> Staples, aka Jerry Yeet, Stephanie Goodner, Sign After Boo, Stay Brilliant Tobago, Tabioka Baglue, Tato Fair, Teddy the Police, Tenta Monster, that one too fusky, The Marble Jerry. Oh wait, Jerry Marble. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Tom, but it's the Jerry on the inside the cows. <laughs> Treeberg, the Jerry monologues. <laughs> Will Mags, Conrad Mooney, Kira, you're a wizard, Jerry. Redwind, Amy, Prince, welcome to the foe. Goose says honk, Naga Viper, Saints, Blessing, John indoors, a normal Jerry. We are Jerry. Resistance is futile, beard. Prepare to be washed. <laughs> we go scrub you real good. Hunter of Jerry's, devourer of all things tasty, it is Tom. Admiral T, Tank, Alunia, Amara, Atomic, Jerryzilla, AZ, Banished Knight, Barbushka's a radiator jam, Broken Spine, Horseradish. <laughs> the original different Jerry, that's Cake Jerry. California Jerry Girl, Canadian Lynx, Carrot Jerry, God of Veggies, Good for Your Eyes, Cha 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 Cha, Jerry, <laughs> Chris Mesca, Cinnamon Buddy Dog, Corporal Admiral, Lieutenant, Private General, Tigerian, Princess Furry Warrior, Blue Jerry. <laughs> I don't always read it out, but when I do, uh, I, I fuck it up. Cryptid East, <laughs> Cuba Jerry, Devon Jerry, Electrical Fennec, Ever Changing Jerry, and Tom versus B Apocalypse, Ghost of Alpha, HMT Mayor, Holy Berry Jerry, <laughs> Hydra Jerry, Irish Jerry, Jerry Jerry Pinks, Misa, like your name, <laughs> Jerry was a race car driver, Jerry Aldo Rivera, Jerry Bean, Yum, Jerry Roxas, Yay, Jerry Role Playing Game, Judge Jerry, and Executioner, but mostly Executioner. <laughs>
King Tom, <laughs> the smasher of Jerry Zillas, Kids Again, Crafty Kitty Cat, Life of Guardian, Little Ann Woods, Maybe Next Time, Midnight Sun, Milk Fed Gift, Miss Duchess, Not Invisible Angel, I See You, One Leg Jerry, Organic Cam, Princess Rosalie Jerry, Congrats on the Marriage, Ghosty, Raptor Art, She's My Jerry Pie, Silurian King, Snary, the Snom Jerry, <laughs> Spoonie the Rogue, Steampunk Ellie, That One Green Jerry, The Necro Jerry Con, The Original Jerry, Not, The Most Different Jerry, Maybe, To Infinity Jerry, and Beyond. And un Jerry. And also Tom promised Jerry swears. Oh no, bad Jerry. Tom be a good boy. Don't swear. It's just a fact. Totally science. Go. Look it up. Another Red X video. Etc. <laughs> and also thank you to my $1 patrons. Good lord, you guys. I'm loving the love on the Patreon. It's just a beautiful thing to see. Thank you guys all so very much for supporting on the Patreon. As always, absolutely killing it. End of the month is coming up. Time to get them last minute pledges in. And I would appreciate that. But honestly, if you can't afford to do it right now, don't sweat it, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watching some more Red X videos. We got a lot of them. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, friends, bye-bye.